Hi folks. We all go through rough times every now and then. Sometimes can be worse than others. It may be an illness or a loss. It might be depression or family issues. It might be financial struggles. In those situations, we may feel discouraged. We may feel devastated, weak, or shaken to our very core. Our heart may ache to the point where we feel like we may die. We may become depressed or even suicidal. Those are our darkest moments. Those are the moments when we feel the most alone or abandoned. You may feel that the Bible may not have an answer for you during those times. How can anyone understand your level of hurt or pain? What are you going through is awful and personal. How can the Bible identify with that? Obviously, the Bible can't speak to a pain like that right now, right? Well, not so fast, my friend. You see, the Bible is full of stories about ordinary people just like you. It's not a book of fairy tales without real problems or issues. The Bible tells us about real people with real problems. It tells us about people who are not perfect in sin. It tells us about people who struggle with sickness and death. It tells us about unfaithfulness in marriage. It tells us about poverty and people who are destitute. It tells us about people who are rejected and persecuted. It tells us, well, just about regular people like you and me. Still not convinced? Well, let's talk about someone whose life fell apart. Someone who had more things happen to him in just a few days than most of us would experience in a lifetime. His name is Job. Now let's see what happens to him. Job chapter 1 begin with verse 13. One day when Job's sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby, and the Sabians attacked and made off with them. They put the, they put the servants to the sword. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you. And while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from the heavens and burned up the sheep and the servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. And while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down on your camels and made off with them, and they put your servants to the sword. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. <clears throat> and while he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, Your sons and daughters were feasting and drinking wine at the oldest brother's house, and then suddenly a mighty wind swept in from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. And it collapsed on them, and they are dead, and I am the only one who escaped to tell you. At this, Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. And then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked. I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In all of this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. 
So what can we learn from this passage in Job? The first thing is, don't lose faith in God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24 says, Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for it is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not teach treat pro prophecies with contempt, but test them all and hold on to what is good. Reject every, every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Psalm 40, verse 4 says, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. In those difficult times, do you lose faith? Do you have trouble having faith in God? John chapter 14 verses 1 through 4 says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. And this is Jesus speaking. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go there to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may also be where I am. You know the place. You know the way to the place I am going. And James chapter 5 verses 13 through 15 says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church and pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of Jesus and in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. And back to Job chapter 2, beginning with verse 7. And so Satan went out of the presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Imagine that. Soul, sores from head to toe. And then Job took a piece of broken pottery and scraped himself with it and sat among the ashes. And his wife said to him, are you still maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. He replied, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? So the second point here is, understand that in this life, there will be times of trouble. Folks, we're going to have good times and we're going to have bad times. And there will be times of trouble. It's not unusual. It's not something that's unique to each and every one of us. We all go through it. John chapter 16 verse 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I am have overcome the world. Let me say it again. It's what Jesus' words are. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You see, it's those troubled times 
to help us mature as Christians. And James is quick to point that out. In verse 12 of that same passage, it says, Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. And when tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers, dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. And so see, there's going to be tough times in each and every one of our lives. And when we go through it, it may seem unique. It may seem different. It may seem very personal. But we all go through it. Back to Job chapter 2, beginning with verse 11. <clears throat> in all this, Job did not sin in what he said. It says, When Job's three friends, Eliphaz, Timonite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Nemanite, heard all the troubles that he had come upon him, they set out from their house and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. And when they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud, and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. And then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. The third point is the importance of being there. There is a certain comfort that comes from having someone by your side and those difficult times in your life. It is important for us to be there for our friends when they are having a difficult time. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 11 through 15 says, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just in fact you are doing. Now we ask, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them up in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, discourage the dis encourage the disheartened. Let me say that again. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 talks about the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God 
of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. But it doesn't stop there. It says, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. We pass it on, folks. We receive comfort from Him, and we pass it on to others. You may not know what to say to your friends during those times, but just being there with them will help them make it through it. Notice what Job 2.13 says. It says, Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Job's friends sat there with him for seven days. During the whole time, they didn't say a word. Could you do that? Can you be that dedicated to a friend in need? Did you know that you don't have to say anything? You could sometimes just sit there with them, and that is enough. Instead of words, offer a hug or put your arm around them. I can remember one time when I was really, really hurting and the tears were streaming down my cheeks. Others had offered their words of sympathy and encouragement, but that didn't seem to help very much. I still hurt just as much as I did before they did that. And then one of my friends, after seeing the tears rolling down my face, walked up to me, and without saying a word, he wrapped his arms around me and pulled me in to his embrace. And he held me there against him, just like you would a baby. And for minutes, I wept there in his arms without any words at all. Finally, the tears stopped, and he finally released me from his hug. Folks, that was over 25 years ago. And I still remember it as if it were yesterday. You see, that's the power of just being there for one another. There were others that came. But he came in love. Embraced me. And held me while I wept. And never said a word. No words are needed. Folks, just be there. And while it is important for us to be there for one another, there is a presence around us and in us that is so much more powerful and moving than that. He never leaves you. Even when you sit alone in your room crying, he is there. He is your greatest hope, your biggest supporter, and He loves you more than all the others combined. The fourth point, God is always there for you. Elihu reminds Job and his friends of how mighty God is and he reminds them that God is always there and listening. It may, uh, it may be that we push him away 
or refuse to even acknowledge his existence. Can you imagine that? Some folks just don't acknowledge his existence. But God is always still there for us. Even though we don't acknowledge him, he still loves each and every one of us. Job 33, verses 8 through 18, Elihu says to Job, But you have said what but you have said in my hearing, and I heard the very words, I am pure. I have done nothing wrong. I am clean and free from sin. Yet God has found fault with me. He considers me his enemy. Can you imagine that? Job saying that? God considers me his enemy. He fastens my feet in shackles. He keeps close watch on all my past. But I tell you, in this, you are not right. And he's talking to Job here. For God is greater than any mortal. Why do you complain to him that he responds to no one's words? And then he says, For God does speak, not one way, now another though no one perceives it. Now one way, now another, though no one perceives it. So God speaks to us in different ways. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on people as they slumber in their beds, he may speak in their ears and terrify them with warnings to turn them from wrongdoing and keep them from their pride to preserve them from the pit their lives from perishing by the sword you see Elihu condemns Job's friends and Job's claim of being without sin and he declares that God is just and he condemns Job's attitude toward God that God is indeed there every day, every night, 24-7. God is there. And then he exalts God's greatness. He tells how wonderful and mighty God is. Elihu's four-part speech is followed by God breaking his silence to directly answer Job in Job 38, verses 1 through 3. And it says, The Lord speaks... Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Imagine that. Out of a storm. He said, Who is it that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. God's like, Really? Really? You're questioning me? And then the Job. 40 verses 1 through 5. And the Lord said to Job, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. And then Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. In, in chapter 42, verses 1 through 2, it says, And Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. Finally, Job's eyes are opened, and he realized that Yes, indeed, God was there all along. And God is just, and God is mighty, and he cares. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. 
do not do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you and help you I will uphold you with my righteous hand Psalm 40 verses 4 through 6 said blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord who does not look to the proud to those who turn aside to false gods many Lord my God are the wonders you have done the things you have planned for us none can compare with you where I speak and tell of your deeds they would be too many to declare Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 through 20 you know the passage Jesus said go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and a lot of us stop there but it says and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age and it doesn't stop there John 14 verses 15 through 18 if you love me keep my commands and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever in the spirit of truth the world cannot ex accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him he lives with you and will be in you I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. John 16, verses 13 through 15. It says, And when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. And he will not speak on his own, but he will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you all that belong to the father all all that belongs to the father is mine that is why i said the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you john 16 verses 31 and 32 do you now believe jesus replied a time is coming and in fact has come when you will be scattered each to your own home you will you will leave me all alone and he looked at this as I was that you will leave me all alone yet I am not alone <laughs> for my father is with me just as he's with you folks just as the Holy Spirit is with you you are never alone so what does that mean Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 through 34 Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and your body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not, not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life and we know that's that's true you can't worrying shortens your life and why do you worry about your clothes see how the flowers of the field grow they do not spin labor or spin yet i tell you that not even solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these and that is how god, god clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, for do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And finally, John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave you with, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives you. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. My friends, whatever you may be going through right now, God is right there for you. His Holy Spirit is in you 
to help you through whatever crisis you may face. He is your comfort and your strength. He has you in his arms and will love you like nobody else can. If someone has walked away in, the, in your relationship with him, it is God. It is you, not God. It is time to stop running away from him. It is time to stop ignoring him. It is time to run back into his outstretched arms of love. Don't be too proud. Come as a child. Throw caution to the wind and leap into his arms. You will be safe in his arms. Do not lose faith in God. Understand that in this life there will be troubles. And there is the importance of being there for others. And God is always there for you. I love you all. I miss you all. May God bless each and every one of you. Hope to see you soon.